So if you have followed my channel for any amount of time, you know that I have been in a browser search for a very long time. I've never been completely happy with any browser ever. Like, seriously, I'm super picky when it comes to browsers, and usually what that means is that I just default to Firefox, because Firefox is open source, it's very customizable with user Chrome, and it just works well enough that I can't complain too badly. Well, I mean, that's not true. I complain about it all the damn time, but it's about as good as you can get in terms of an open source browser that does what a browser is supposed to do. So I usually just stick with Firefox as my main browser. But that doesn't really mean all that much because I switch browsers all the time in hopes that I'm going to finally find one that is just, you know, mm, the browser. It's the browser that is going to keep me there for the rest of all eternity and it's going to be awesome and has all the features that I want and it runs fast and you know it just does everything in the perfect way. Obviously such a browser does not exist and even though I'm going to be talking about another browser today that I've criticized often in the past it still doesn't exist right, right? there is no perfect browser and uh, unless I'm going to become a development god I don't think I'm going to go out and actually code my own, so I'm going to have to rely on work of others. But all that being said, Vivaldi has released a brand new release of their browser. Now, in the past, I have been very critical of Vivaldi. I think I even made one saying that they're hypocrites at one point. I'm not very kind to the developers of Vivaldi. I haven't ever been, and... Most of the reason why that's the case is because they do this whole proprietary nonsense thing where they claim they're 95% open source and then the rest of it's just a little bit of proprietary on top. You won't even notice, right? That has always bugged me and it will always continue to bug me because I don't like proprietary software for the most part despite having to continue to use it. But I will say that this new release of Vivaldi is really good and I'm gonna use it so despite it being proprietary garbage I'm gonna be using Vivaldi at least for now now as I said at the beginning I switch browsers all the damn time so it's a good chance that something about Vivaldi will piss me off but for now Vivaldi has become my browser and I want to talk about why so let's talk about this new update and why it has made me switch so this is Vivaldi. It looks basically like Vivaldi always has. Now there are some customization things that they've added in version 6 that are really good. Things like being able to customize the icons in different places and stuff like that. It's That stuff is nice. It's not as fully featured customizable as Firefox is in terms of UI elements. Not necessarily because, you know, of the placement of the stuff, but more because with user Chrome and being that being CSS, you can actually do a whole bunch more stuff with CSS editing than you can with the built-in customizations that Vivaldi offers. But that stuff's really besides the point. Yes, I really like customizing the look and feel of stuff, but that stuff was so minor it doesn't really move the needle any on how I feel about Vivaldi. But the one thing that has seriously made me love this browser in the little bit of time that I've been using it is workspaces. Now, if you watched my channel before, you guys know I love workspaces. And what's the other thing that I love? Tabs. I love tabs. And if you if you combine those two things, it's like nirvana for me. So, so they've added this thing called workspaces. Now, basically what workspaces allow you to do is separate your groups of tabs into workspaces. So I have one for, say, for my video ideas. And I have all those video ideas here. And then it just kind of switches to those. So you could have a different theme for the workspace if you wanted to. So, you know, like a white theme if you wanted to do that, you could do that. You could have, it, like I have it here. So I actually have some tab stacks inside of a workspace. So that means even more organization. So I have tab stacks of all the distro ideas that I have, all of the window manager ideas that I have, and terminal apps and app regular applications and stuff like that. All that inside of stacks inside of a workspace so it's kind of like nested folders it's really cool that i can organize my stuff that way and it just makes me 
want to open up more tabs. <laughs> and I'm a tab hoarder already. At one point, I had over 100 tabs this last week. Now, I know there are many people who have more. This is not a competition. But I had a ton of tabs. And this whole idea behind being able to organize my stuff into workspaces and tab stacks, which are basically tab groups, is just amazing. Now, I had this basic functionality inside of Firefox. So don't get me wrong that I, I have been missing this functionality. So with simple tab groups... In Firefox, I could basically do the same thing. I had a little drop down in the top bar. I can move to different groups and stuff like that. And that was basically a workspace functionality. But this is built in. And I abhor extensions. Despite the fact that I have to use a whole bunch of them, I don't like to. Like, these are all the extensions down here in the lower right-hand corner that I use. And I want to get rid of as many of them as possible. Unfortunately, I use all of these, right? Like I want, I want to uh, have you know certain functionality, and that requires me to use extensions. But l with workspaces built in, I can at least remove one more extension from my extensions pack, and that makes me happy. And on top of that, that it's just a, it's just an amazing combination of things that I wholeheartedly enjoy. So the ability to stack tabs, which is basically groups, which is how I have these here. So I have the group names up here at the top, and then the stack. Or the group is down here in tabs like this. Now, Vivoli offers you different ways of displaying tab groups, which is cool. I really do like that. But add on top of that that you can put them into their own workspaces, which is like a group of groups. It's just so good. And it allows you to basically organize your tabs in any number of ways. You can be as organized as you want. And it's just so good. Now... All this being said, it doesn't mean that Vivaldi is perfect, obviously. There's still things here that absolutely drive me nuts. So the first one is that I'm in a window manager. I don't need these buttons up here. I want those to go away. I don't know if you can make those go away. There's a chance you can. I just haven't found it yet. But I want those to go away. That's the first thing that I always see. Also, one of the coolest features in Firefox is that you can hide the bookmarks bar with a key binding and then bring it back with a key binding. I'm not sure if you can do that with Vivaldi. It's something that I'm going to have to look into. So there are still things here that bug me. But overall, I've been using it now for, I don't know, 12 hours or so. And that's not obviously a long time, but it's still, it's just really, really good so far. And that workspace functionality is just top of the line. Like seriously, seriously good. It's going to make, if I do move away from Vivaldi again, that's going to be one of those features that I miss, right? Another cool thing that you can do with the whole workspace thing is that you can actually change the icon for each of these. So if you wanted to use an emoji or something like that, you could do so or a different icon. I do wish they'd allow you to change the color. So if you wanted to change, you know, you could use a different icon that has a color so that it would kind of stand up, but it would really be cool if you could change a color. Now, another feature that I'd really like them to have. So if I wanted to say move this tab here to a workspace, you can do that. So if you hit uh, move, and you could move it to one of the workspaces that you've created. What I'd like them to be able to do is add on to this functionality so that if I have a tab stack inside of one of these workspaces, I could move it to that tab stack. That would be awesome. It may be too complicated, but that's that'd be really cool. Because right now, if I wanted to move this, I'd have to move it to, say, uh, to do. And then I have to go to to do. I'd find it, you know, up here. And then if I wanted to move that to the to a tab stack, I'd have to drag it all the way over to the tab stack. It, you know, it's a few extra steps and it's not great, right? I'd much rather be able to move that from a menu. So the new version of Vivaldi is really good. I didn't go through all the features, but the two main ones are replacing the icons along the bar here along the side. So if you have the bar open, you can replace these icons. You can replace the icons for forward and back that are down here if you wanted to. That's cool enough. I'm probably not even going to bother with that because these are just fine. I just want to replace the theme, which you can do in the settings. So that's the one big feature. The other big feature and the one that I've been going on and on about is the workspaces. And that is still just the coolest thing. So yeah, I have switched browsers again. Now I know that I switch browsers a lot. Like I said, I switch browsers all the time. So not breaking news here, folks. But that workspace functionality, which I think that they stole from Opera. I'm not sure if that's true. I haven't used Opera in like 20 years and I doubt I'll ever use Opera again. I don't know anybody who does use Opera, but I'm sure there are some people, and I'm sure there's actually someone who's going to comment in the comment section below and say, hey, Opera is really good. I'm sure it is. I'm not going to use Opera. It's I didn't even, how is it even still a thing, really? But anyways, I'm pretty sure they took that functionality from Opera. I may be wrong about that, but that functionality alone has got me to switch from Firefox to Vivaldi. 
Now, I still wish it was open source, like 100% open source, not this pansy ass half ass shit that uh <laughs> that Vivaldi has going on right now. I totally just completely, you know, swore many times <laughs> in a YouTube video, which I tried not to do. But the point is that, you know, I wish it was open source. If it was seriously, if Vivaldi was open source, I probably would have been using it ages ago, right? Because the customizability of it has always been really, really good, even without the CSS stuff that Firefox offers. They like to give you options to move stuff around, and I love that. That's something that even Firefox doesn't give you, right? Yes, you can move stuff around in Firefox if you know CSS, but if you don't know CSS, you don't have the option to do this stuff. Whereas Vivaldi doesn't give you CSS, but they do give you options to move stuff, which is really good. But it's not open source, and it's the one thing that has always kind of kept me from liking it. The other thing has been it is kind of bloated. I will say that. Now, it's not as bloated as Edge has become. So if you've ever, if you've used Microsoft Edge lately, they keep cramming not only features in it, but really weird like advertisements and crypto stuff and bings all over the place. It's, it's typical Microsoft stuff. So Vivaldi is not that bad, but I don't need an email client. I don't need an RSS feed reader in my browser. Now, the good news is, is that those things are things that you have to enable in order for them to be there. So that's good news. It's opt-in, so that's good. But I don't really want those things in my browser anyways, so maybe it's a little bit of bloat. But again, if it was proprietary, maybe the perfect browser or closer than it is now. So anyways, a little bit of a ramble about Vivaldi 6.0. So far, it has been really, really good. I'm going to continue to use it for quite a while and we'll see how it goes. So we'll see. who wants to take bets on when I go back to Firefox? Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully not because I do really, really like Vivaldi right now. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on Vivaldi or anything like that, you can leave those in the comment section below. I know that the super passionate, open source, freedom loving people amongst my audience, of which there are many are going to be like, Matt, why are you using proprietary garbage? I know. I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. And if this ruins your opinion of me, I, I, I can only deeply apologize to you for, for my offenses against you. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to do it if something's good, unfortunately. Right. And, just the way it is. Anyways, that's it for this video. You can leave comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Links for LiberaPay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just will not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you guys so very, very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Nailed it!